The TurboGrafx-16's library is known for several things, having a lot of great shooters, a good sense of variety, and many outstanding soundtracks. But something I think goes unsaid far too often is the relatively high percentage of just straight up weird games. As a fan of the TurboGrafx and weird things, making a video about this makes a lot of sense to me. The games I'm going to talk about aren't necessarily great or ranked in any way, I just want to point out their strange and unusual elements. So let's talk about what I think are the weirdest of the weird on the system. Psychosis is as good a place to start as any, I suppose. It's a side-scrolling shooter that, honestly, I think is one of the best on the system. It plays similarly to most shooters of this kind, with a few different weapon power-ups, satellites, shields, speed boosts, you get the idea. Where it gets weird and stands out from the crowd, though, is in its designs and just overall presentation. Psychosis apparently takes place inside a crazy person's mind, according to the manual, so that pretty much gave the developers free reign to throw as many crazy things at you as they wanted, and they certainly did. You'll run into weird insects, floating eyeballs, crazy demon masks, and all kinds of other creatures that defy description in the game. The backgrounds are also outstanding with lots of cool looking designs, loud color schemes, and tears in the fabric of reality. The music also goes really well with the visuals with lots of unsettling melodies and off-putting King Crimson-y time signatures. It certainly fits the game. Like a lot of shooters from the era, this one is very unforgiving, and if you die and lose all of your stuff in a later level, like I did here, you can forget about beating it. Overall, Psychosis is a great game though. If you can get a chance to play it, you should. Bravo Man is a sillier kind of weird than Psychosis, but still very weird nonetheless. It's a pretty standard goofy superhero has to save the world type game, but with a thick layer of colorful madness on top of it. The enemies, the bosses, and even Bravo Man himself are all pretty wacky, and the game also plays differently than most games like it with Bravo Man's extendable limbs. The longer you hold down the attack button, the longer the limbs stretch out, and this gives the gameplay a feel of its own. It also mixes things up with the occasional shooter level, which I appreciate. Unfortunately, it does overstay its welcome with a lot of stages that are often quite long and don't really change much, so it can feel a little monotonous after a while. Bravo Man also controls a tad bit clunky for my taste. Still, I think it's worth having for short bursts of ridiculousness. Apparently there's a relatively modern cartoon from Namco too, which I ran into as I was doing research on the game. And it's actually not bad. Go check it out. Ghost Manor is almost never mentioned in conversations about the Turbo, and I think I understand why. It's a platformer shooter that doesn't have particularly great platforming or shooting, but that being said, the odd music, the light horror visuals, and its own brand of mild silliness make it a pretty weird game. Another thing that's kind of off-putting is the subtle difference in art style that many of the enemies and the main characters seem to have. Nothing quite feels like it doesn't belong, but everything just feels a little bit off because of that. You do get some interesting interesting designs out of that approach though, like these guys. I'm not too sure if I like this one or not, although he's definitely disturbing. As I mentioned, the platforming isn't bad, but it isn't great either. And even though the game mixes things up nicely with lots of verticality and searching around for keys, it can start to drag a bit, especially when you get lost or stuck, which will definitely happen at times with this type of level design. It's an interesting game though, everything comes together in a weird way, and ultimately I think it stands out for that. Somer Assault, Somer, Somer, I don't know, Somer Assault is unlike anything else you are likely to play ever. At its core, it's a side-scrolling shooter, I guess. It doesn't really defy genre, but it does defy just about everything else. You play a slinky thing who wants to save the world from an evil sorceress and her zodiac demon creatures. Why not? 
The levels are kind of maze-like, but they're not too bad, and they make you get creative with traversal. Lots of power-ups like speed and shot multipliers keep things interesting, and the music is pretty good too. Very fast and overly energetic. I think I like the boss music the most. The bosses themselves start out fairly easy, with you just needing to find a safe spot to sit and just fire away, but as you might expect, they do get much harder. Overall, this is a pretty neat game with an interesting idea, creative level designs, great animations, and fun gameplay to go along with all of its weirdness. Pretty tough to find this for a reasonable price, but if you can, I can really recommend this one. Ballistics is a game that I really want to like because of its weird designs and aesthetic. It's very much got that late 80s, 90s Psygnosis look to it, and I love that look as it reminds me a lot of a lot of the other games from that era that I really do like. But unfortunately, Ballistics just isn't very much fun. You shoot a crap ton of balls and get another ball to go into the opponent's goal while they do the same to you, and that's it. You can play by yourself against the computer with another player, which is nice and with nobody for some reason. Some of the levels try to mix things up with arrows that slant the stage in various directions, but it doesn't really seem to affect much, and it's just too little too late. The game is just boring and seems to have very little rhyme or reason to it. The best part about it is its weirdness, and this demon that comes in before each round. Let the game commence. After that, it's pretty much all downhill. Still, this is a weird game that can definitely give you a few brief moments of fun, especially if you're playing with somebody else and you can just sort of mess around with it for a little while. It might click with some people, and like I said, it's cool looking and I appreciate its weirdness, but yeah, I just don't think it's very good. Drop Off is in a league of its own, sort of like Psychosis. Drop Off is about being inside somebody's mind, but instead of fighting off mental illness, you're trying to satisfy her dreams, whatever that means. And for some reason, that entails smashing a bunch of objects with a ball like a breakout game. Although instead of a paddle, you have a little blue ball thing. Drop Off adds a few interesting twists to that formula though. You have little power-ups that you can get that freeze the descent of whatever object you're battling, score multipliers, things like that. There's also these things that fall down that can kill your little blue ball thingy, and we can't have that. You can open or close the little blue ball thingy to choose between a straighter shot or a more angled one, and this can add some nice depth and strategy once you get used to it. Also, the floor beneath you can also get destroyed in some levels if you miss the ball too much. So there is a lot more going on here than perhaps meets the eye. This game gets a lot of hate in the Turbo Graphics community, and you know, I don't agree with that at all. This is one of the more addictive puzzle games on the system in my opinion. The only real complaint I have is that some of the levels go on a little too long and it would be nice if there were more than just two music tracks for all the levels. So because of that, it can start to lose its luster after a while, but other than that, I really like the game, especially in short bursts. Keith Courage in Alpha Zones is a turbo graphics game that pretty much everybody with any experience with the system has played since it was the pack-in game. Lord knows why they made this the pack-in game and not Bonk or Legendary Axe, as those games were far better, but I think because everybody agrees it's not as good as those games, that we overlook how weird it actually is. First off, it's like two totally separate games. The bright, colorful, simplistic platformer in the overworld, where you get stuff from shops, you kill enemies and hop around on platforms. Everybody hates these parts, but I actually kind of like them. You can farm the hell out of the enemies and get rich. Then there's the darker, weirder action game in the underworld where everything changes. These parts of the game are actually pretty awesome and have some really creative designs for the enemies and the bosses. You've got enemies with giant guns for heads, little weird skull crab things, which are apparently called crypt creatures according to the manual, okay. 
and a whole host of other weird things. And these levels really were impressive for the time. If the whole game were just this, it probably would have been received a lot better over here in the States. Nevertheless, the game as a whole has a very unique feel to it because of its various contradictions and creative designs. Some people hate it, some people love it. I'm probably somewhere in the middle ultimately, but I do really like how weird it is. And even though it probably didn't deserve to be the pack-in game, I still think it plays fairly well, it's fairly interesting, and it stands out. Alien Crush is one of the two big Naxat pinball games on the system, but usually gets overshadowed by its big brother, Devil's Crush, which is understandable. But I still really like this one too. You get two music tracks to listen to, one that sounds like an evolution on the theme from Jaws, and one that sounds a lot like the song Burn by Deep Purple, and both are good. The board itself is two levels, and it's pretty obvious that 80s sci-fi and horror movies were the inspiration here, Alien in particular. And they use the aesthetic well. Everywhere you look, there's hideous mouths, brains, eggs, or something else equally disturbing, and it's great. I particularly like this thing, whatever it is. Just like Devil's Crush, the board is alive and can be altered depending on what you hit. These eggs can be hatched, you can rearrange these little foreskin things, and you can trigger any one of the several bonus stages. Now, I like the bonus stages, but they don't stand out as much as the ones in Devil's Crush. Still, they're a fun distraction from the main board. One sore spot I do have with this game is sometimes it'll just screw you over and the ball will drain right down the middle of the flippers where you can't hit it. And I know that this isn't uncommon for pinball games, but I still find it annoying. Outside of that, I find it to be pretty balanced and fair. Alien Crush is one of the few games on this list that is just as good as it is weird, and I can highly recommend it. So there you have it. While there are plenty of weird games on the system, these are the ones that stand out to me the most in that way. Even though they aren't all outstanding games, they definitely deserve to be recognized for their weirdness, if nothing else. Let me know what games you think are particularly strange and why, and I'll probably talk about them when I visit this topic again. But until then, thanks for watching.